Here we have a new 2023 Nissan Leaf. And this Leaf comes in the SV Plus trim level. So you get the EPA rated 212 miles of range with that 60 kilowatt hour battery. Have a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger. And this one comes in the two-tone pearl white with black roof. And we have black cloth interior. And we have that one speed direct drive transmission. And we get 214 horsepower with this setup here. There's our front end. We do get LED daytime running lights along with LED headlamps. And then I'm gonna show you all before I turn the lights on, how we open the charge door. So the vehicle has to be off. Push that button there. And then we have our standard CCS plug there. And then that, uh, however you CAD, CADMO, whatever, that charge port there. And just close that. But now we're gonna go ahead and start it up, take a look at the front, and then go on from there. So there we have our daytime running lights and headlamps there, and they don't flash, that's just the camera. And then we have our halogen fog lights down there. But I really do like this look. But my favorite thing about this one in particular is gonna be these wheels. And these are gonna be 17 inch aluminum. Really cool. And I just love how it's black and you have the tips are kinda that aluminum brush look. And we get passive keyless entry, the front two doors. And then here we have the controls for our power windows, power door locks, power mirrors. And then we have one touch up and down for the driver's side. Cup holder, little storage there. And then over here, you can turn that 360 on, heated steering wheel. That's how you open the charge door. And there we have our power driver seat with power lumbar support there. Now let's check out this window sticker. So like I said, you have the 60 kilowatt hour battery and then you have the 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger there. Of course we get the Pro Pilot Assist standard. Let's go ahead and check out this back seat room. So I have the seat in front of me adjusted for someone of my size being 6'3". And these seats are actually pretty massive in my opinion. And especially at the top here, how it intrudes in the back that's why I really can't fit my legs back here. But if you're only riding with two people in the back, it's doable. But just not a huge amount of space compared to some of the other competitors out there. But this vehicle is also 10 to 15 grand cheaper than all of those. So can't really complain there either. And I do like that you have the storage here. You have the cup holders here. Nice little tray here. And it feels really nice. So you can actually plug your phone in there and lay it right there, which most competitors don't have something like that. But then if you have somebody in the middle seat, that might be a problem. But one thing I can say is I do love this two-tone and even like this diffuser back here, See how that shines there? It's a nice kind of, I don't even know what to call it. Just a shiny gray.
And then adequate cargo space back here. I like the pockets deep in here. So if you're good at stowing stuff, you'll have a lot of room. Even though it's not as far back, it is deeper than most competitors. Of course, this one has the emergency roadside kit. And then we have the floor mats and then the charger here. Just wanna admire that rear end. And then what's cool is if you want even more room, all you have to do is pull up here and then when the seat's up far enough, this will fold flat and then you can put longer objects in here too. And then you can just pull it back up, lock it back into place. And here we have our front passenger seat there. It's gonna be manual. And then I really like that you get the side, the rear side airbags with this leaf. Has pretty good crash test ratings with the IIHS. So let's go ahead and pop the hood here. We can see what's underneath. And I like that you can actually see the powertrain and how it's actually in the engine bay. That's pretty cool. But it's crazy. Look at all that's going on down there. All sorts of stuff. I'd hate to have to work on one of these. I don't even know if I closed that all the way. Oh, I did. It's a weird shut. But anyways, on to the driver's seat. So one thing I wish the Nissan would fix is that warning chime. Like I don't know that the vehicle's on and the door's open. Cause that chime does get annoying, especially when I'm trying to film a video. But if you're one that likes to forget what you're doing, that might be good for you. But over here, we have the screen here. This one's been in the lease for a minute. I wish we could get a bigger screen, but this is it's good for what it is. You do have your nav and you have your Apple CarPlay, your Android Auto. Then you get AM, FM, XM along with Bluetooth. And I like having that you can toggle that auto and night brightness there. You have a 360 view. You have a front camera. There's your backup camera with guidelines. And as you turn the steering wheel, it'll kind of show you where you're going. And then we have our single zone automatic climate controls here. You can toggle that, mess with the modes, and then cut that off. And of course the heat here, you can toggle that because that's what'll burn through your range. And I like that we have two stage heated seats for the driver and front passenger, 12 volt there. USB-C, USB-A inputs there, and that's how you'll run that Apple CarPlay Android Auto. And I do like that they put these here, so you can toggle your eco mode here, and then your e-pedal here for that regenerative braking, because that's where I like to have my control. I don't like having them over here for when I'm driving, I like to be able to Kind of keep my hand over here and then if i need to eco hit the eco mode on the fly or the e-pedal especially if i just want to cut that off it's right there and i don't have to look for it it was smart that they put kind of a pedal there instead of another button but to the shifter here press p for park hit the brake pull up for reverse and then we can just pull down for drive and then we can hold that and put it in a neutral. And you do have to hold it because that's something I hated about the uh, Infinity that I had was with that, I couldn't get it to go in a neutral because I actually had to hold it and not just tap it over like you would think. Here we have our electronic parking brake. 
pull up to engage, press down to disengage. Just an itty bitty center console cubby space here, but it's a bit deep. And like I said earlier, they make up for that by putting that storage back there. It's very helpful. And there's a view of the back seat from up here. Have an SOS button there. I do like that we have the LED dome lights there. And then sunglasses holder there. Just a small glove compartment there, but it'll fit everything you need. License, registration, all that. And this was simple to put here, but I like that they did that. Looks really futuristic, but mostly that's all you get. Everything else is pretty much plastic. So to the steering wheel here, we have these buttons, of course the four arrows and the okay, and we can use that to go through our settings and the left side of the gauge cluster, which is gonna be digital. So audio and we can change what we're looking at there. And I like that you're able to see battery temperature, the capacity, really nice to have all of that there. So, you know, kind of you can keep up with your degradation and things of that nature. And then of course you have your economy you can track, but volume controls are here, trackless favorites or radio station favorites and trackless controls are here. It's a back button for the gauge cluster as well as the radio. And then over here we have our cruise controls. And with this having the pro pilot assist, we do have that 360 adaptive cruise there. And then we can adjust the gap for that. And then voice recognition controls here. Headlamp controls, fog light controls, windshield wipers. And there's our push button start. Finally, here's our key fob. But next, we're gonna go ahead and take this Leaf SV Plus out on the road for a quick test drive. So the Eco Mode is really nice because it helps with this, with keeping your range and not using too much power. And then I'm gonna turn that off. This does pack quite a punch. And then when the e-pedal's off, I mean, you can really coast. And like I said earlier, it's just nice that you're able to do that. But I like one pedal personally, or strong regenerative braking. Even in, I have a Pacifica hybrid. I keep the max region on that at all times. I just like, I guess where I've had EVs for so long, I'm just used to driving like that. And I like being able to recoup that energy. Now I will say the steering on this, I'm so used to driving, I guess, I have a Mach-E and the steering on that is so, especially in the unbridled mode, it's just so heavy that when I let off the brake at full speed and I just, or let off the throttle at full speed and just let the one pedal go, I'm not feeling a pull, but here I'm feeling just the slightest pull, but the steering is much lighter and Nissans are pretty much known for having lighter steering compared to other vehicles, at least in my opinion. So if you don't want to have to use a lot of force to exert your steering, that's a plus when it comes to this vehicle because it's very easy to maneuver.
Yeah, my girlfriend would love this compared to my Mach-E. She hates driving it because she says the steering is just so heavy. It's hard to turn the wheel. But she would not complain about this, I'm sure. Drives like that Infinity she had. And like I said, me personally, I just don't like having that lighter steering. But with that being said, this does make this one an easier EV to get used to because you're not having to pull so hard. I will say the sound acoustics in here are really good. It's very quiet in this vehicle. Of course, it's an EV, so you're not having a lot of engine noise. Well, you're not having any engine noise, but on this rough patch of road, even the tire noise is very minimal. I'm very impressed by that. And the e-pedal's kinda weird. It's taken some getting used to, but when you're letting off at higher speeds, it kinda coasts, and then as you start slowing down, it starts to bite a little bit more, feels like. I'm gonna give it a good pull here. Just a little bit of a burn out there with this being front wheel drive it feels weird but we're going to give it some throttle getting on the interstate here of course acceleration is going to be great And I do wish that they just put a little bit more power in these, but with it being front wheel drive, you really don't want to put too much in. We have the adaptive cruise on now. I always forget the steering assist is over here. I wish they would put it somewhere and made more sense, but Nissan does quirky things. But the Pro Pilot Assist, really good system, and I've said that in other Nissan reviews I've done. Just very comfortable semi autonomous driving there. And this ride quality for an EV is very, very impressive. I'm not feeling a lot of bounce. I'm just slightly getting a little play because of the wind, but other than that, very impressive. And like I said, the ride quality is what's great. It's really smooth. And what's great about the Leaf in general is because this is made right down the road from us here in Manchester, Tennessee and Smyrna, you still get that 
$7,500 EV tax credit, even though this is a Nissan, even under Biden's new EV plan, which I didn't think I would like at first, but I've come to love because next year we're gonna get to have GM and Tesla back on board for the EV tax credit, getting those used EV tax credits eventually. So very nice. But pretty impressed by this leaf, especially for the price point. So with that being said, this is gonna bring me to an end of my review of the 2023 Nissan Leaf SV Plus.